and one for Jacob, 11-3 for Brock. Both players need a win, though, regardless of record, to get in. And Jacob with a pretty commanding board here. Yeah, we look right now, Jacob, with Corsair of Crufix and Archfiend of Depravity. He is at five, however. Brock has a Rabble Master and Seeker and is at 18, so things are not completely sunny for Jacob. You do spy, however, a Siege Rhino in his hand, and now it's a Siege Rhino on the battlefield. Jacob up to eight and Brock down to 15. Yeah, that's the swing that Jacob really needs now, and especially with Siege Rhino on top of the deck. Oh, wow, yeah, that is, that's, that, that's not a graveyard. That's the deck. So another Siege Rhino coming. His hand, another Archfiend, a Utter End and a back to nature. Archfiend will swing over, Brock drops down to 10. And he'll draw a good chance to look at Brock's hand. He has a Sarkon. That certainly can do damage here. It's not a shabby draw. It's a, it's a lot of damage here. Jacob can't currently block it. And here's Sarkon. But often the case, you know, running Siege Rhinos is tough for almost any deck with mountains to deal with. Yep. It's, it's going to be still... Public enemy number one after when new set comes in, you know? That card is unreal. There's going to be plenty of games where you can have whatever strategy you want to have, but when your opponent chooses together some Siege Rhinos, it kind of won't matter. Rarely do I see a matchup where I look at a board and say, man, Siege Rhino wouldn't be very good here. It's, it, it's always good. Yeah, it's got that Thrag Tusk feel to it. Same sort of deal. Yes. <laughs> hard for it to be bad. Sometimes it's not good enough, but it's hard for it to yeah, be bad. Yeah, I, I, the only spot, I think the only matchup where I'm not thrilled about it is when you're playing against Devotion. Yeah. You know, you're like, you feel like, yeah, he's still playing kind of fair. Well, that's, you know, it's the same thing that the same thing that Threat House Cat, where if it's a normal game of Magic, Siege Rhino's very powerful in normal games, but it's possible to be so fast that it doesn't matter, or it's possible for your deck to be so powerful that it doesn't matter. But if you're playing in the middle, Siege Rhino's going to be really, really good most games. Yeah, and I do like that, I guess, even with how the card has been worked out in Standard. You know, four-drop creatures traditionally in Magic have had this really tough spot where they're not aggro enough to be a one or a two, you know, like dangerously mid-range. The ones and twos know what they want to do, and the six and seven drops know what they want to do, and then what do you do with a four drop? Yeah. And what do you do with Siege Rhino? So back over to Brock's side, though. Plays the Sarkon, activates the Sarkon so that he can get back his Flame Wake Phoenix. But it means he's going to have to sacrifice all this stuff at the end of his turn. Well, some of it at least, but, you know, the... The Rabble Master and the Seeker of the Way are looking pretty expendable on this board. The problem is he's at risk of just dying on the crackback. Yeah, I mean, he knows that there's a lot of power in play for Jacob. There's a Siege Rhino that will drain him three more. I, I don't know that without using Sarkon to kill something, I'm not convinced Brock survives this turn. Yeah, it's possible this turn needed to be something like Sarkon and just get rid of the Archfiend. I guess the Seeker of the Way does give him three points of, like, three points of life no matter what happens. Here's a swing with Flame Wake Phoenix, Seeker of the Way, and Sarkhan. And yeah, the Goblin off Rabble Master swinging in as well. And it, Jacob is at eight, and there, there's six damage in the air, so this will force Jacob to block the ground creatures. Remember, and Seeker does have lifelink now, thanks to Sarkhan. So this is gonna pick Brock up to 13 as he played one spell here. On the way back, Jacob has 10 points of power in play and a Siege Rhino on top of his deck. So it yeah, it's, some it's 11 even. Yeah. yeah so, so oh, excuse right. me. Yeah. Sorry. So this is lethal on the way back from Jacob, which means that Brock will have to keep the Rabble Master through the Archfiend here. Right. Because if without the Rabble Master blocking, it is he is dead. So he'll have to. It's probably not the end of the world, you know. That Brock can go ahead and keep the. You can keep Sarkin plus Rabble Master. Yeah, and that's that's fine. The token and the Seeker are dying anyway. And then Phoenix, Phoenix comes back next turn. There's an interesting bind that actually Jacob has Brock in, in that. So, well, the Brock has, rather, Jacob can choose to attack Brock or attack Sarkon. And if he attacks Sarkon, Brock does not have to chump with Rabble Master. Well, but if he attacks Brock, then. The yeah. thing is, Jacob can do a really good job of splitting the difference here by just the flyer goes at Sarkin if he's it's a priority for him to get off the table, and then everything else can go at Brock. Right, but then Brock doesn't have to chump. Right, but Jacob still gets to follow up with yeah. a Siege Rhino, and there's some risks still, but it's probably a safe spot. It draws Siege Rhino. In addition, Jacob can send everything at Brock, force a chump block, and then instead of playing the Rhino out of his hand, he can just cast Utter End. Yep. 
The problem is that Jacob is then at three off of the Corsair trigger, and there's a lot of draws in Brock's deck. That certainly is true. So I think he's true. better served trying to play the Rhino this turn because it gives him some life, and he has the Rabble Master checked. Yeah, it's just he's in such a commanding position. If he can answer Brock's permanence, it's hard to see Jacob losing. As he goes three from the Corsair, then six from the Rhino, the token comes across uncontested next turn, yeah. assuming the Rabble Master attacks. So Jacob's at five. And there's probably not one card that kills him. Yeah, Temple here gains a life. I mean, it's possible you just see Jacob use the flyer to kill Sarkon, play a Siege Rhino, leave everything, like, just leave back a huge wall and say, you know. I don't know. I'm pushing on Brock this turn. I don't want to give this guy too, <laughs> this red deck too many more I, turns. I don't want to give him two turns of chump block in here. I think that, you know, the Siege Rhino here, if you use the Archfiend to take care of Sarkon, it's unlikely that Brock kills you on the way back. And we'll see where Jacob goes with this. He's got a great spot, though, and a lot of good lines. I suppose he can leave the Corsair back on defense to be super safe and right. set up a lethal attack next turn. Maybe that's a little bit safer. Because then you have next turn, you have a flyer plus two tramplers attacking, and you still have the other end in your hand. Yeah, I think you don't. If you just play the Rhino, you, you run the risk of getting Valorous stanced out. And Jacob's going to go for the very conservative line here. That's the one where he just, just kills Sarkon with the Archfiend. And then I, I believe plays Rhino to get out of burn range. I, I still think that it's relatively safe for Jacob to offer up the Siege Rhino here as well, but um, we shall see in a turn. Yeah, plays second Rhino. Life those are now six and ten. It does mean that next turn it looks like Jacob can't may just be able to swing regardless. But does Brock punish him for giving him the turn? <laughs> Rubs his hands together, seeing what can the top of the deck yield. Monastery Mentor. Not a terrible card, but not one that I don't believe will get him out of this. No. Goblin triggers. Goblin swings into Corsair of Crufix. No damage. And it'll just be Monastery Mentor for Brock. His last card is a mountain, and now he is very low on resources. And with the utter end in Jacob's hand, it seems Difficult for Brock to survive this turn. We'll see if he can do it, though. Temple drawn from Jacob. Top card is Urborg. Urborg will be played. Jacob goes up to seven. Flips a new card. It's another Courser of Crufix. I mean, honestly, he can just attack and oh, do yeah. nothing with the other end because the Citron is trample. Put the onus on Brock to have something. And he will just he's going to swing the Tramplers and the Archfiend. This is a total of 13 damage coming across. Brock has to absorb at least four of it. Well, he has four toughness, so chumping everything puts Brock to one. Yeah. You're right. With the Corsair swing, Brock would not only have to chump everything, but also have a trick. Yeah, Jacob's in that spot where his position is so commanding that he's erring on the side of caution. Uh, I think that he probably should have just sent in an alpha strike that turn and yeah. try to try to end it, but... Yeah, the, the, I like what that does is it forces Brock to show you his last card, in which case you get to play with perfect information and you probably have the answer anyway. Brock blocks, utter end happens here, and now that should be enough damage. That should be two, four, and five. That's 11 with Brock at 10. That's going to trample for enough. And there we have it. That's lethal. And with that, Jacob Gio becomes the sixth player in your top eight with a victory. Obs on mid-range. Siege Rhino, not someone to be held out of a top eight. Well... I mean, we're going to have to see, right? Because the tiebreaker math is so fuzzy.